Hey guys, today we're going to talk about AFM, which is Active Fuel Management, DOD, which is Displacement on Demand, and VVT, which is Variable Valve Timing. Everything that we talk about today is going to apply to the Gen 4 and Gen 5 LS and LT engines from GM. The Mopar stuff is similar, but it's a little different. Here at our shop, we specialize in GM late model V8s, so that's what we're going to talk about today. Things we're going to go over in these videos are what these systems are, how these systems work, why these systems have been put into place some of the pros, some of the cons, and how to get rid of it. So let's dive into this episode and talk about AFM, DOD, and VVT on the Gen 4 LS application and Gen 5 LT. All right, so first things first, what is AFM and DOD? So active fuel management and displacement on demand is a technology that's been implemented from GM to deactivate four cylinders in a V8 engine and V6 engines. The way they do this is they deactivate a certain amount of lifters on specific cylinders by using a valley cover that has veins, channels, and oil galleys in it uh, that feed solenoids that are electronically actuated. And those solenoids activate and deactivate the lifters, which deactivate and activate the, the cylinders. I don't have a V-loam cover here. You'll hear me say V-loam several times in this video, and what I'm talking about is a V-L-O-M, which is the valley plate on an AFM engine. Uh, it's called a V-loam, which means valve lifter oil manifold. When you don't take very good care of your engine or you have poor oil change intervals, the dirty oil and worn out oil, all the trash that's in that oil can clog up the channels and veins within that V-loam and cause premature lifter failure. Now there's towers in the block underneath that V-loam cover and that's what the oil is fed through and goes to the lifters. Not all Gen 4 LS engines have this. The ones that don't have a valley cover that's just flat and it blocks off those AFM towers inside the block. Have the V-loam that has the solenoids and the veins in it. Now here's a conventional lifter. Just a regular LS7 truck lifter. There's an AFM lifter. You can see it's got a spring on top. This little contraption here. It's what allows this lifter to be deactivated. But when you cut off oil feed to this and deactivate it, it causes issues like parts to move, like this spring is moved and it was wearing on the side. Here you can see the shiny. And these are way more prone to fail than a conventional lifter. Although we still risk a failure with a conventional lifter, it's not as common as with an AFM lifter. The only way these aren't going to fail is if they're not in the engine. Now let's talk about why GM would even do this. Their biggest their biggest goal with doing this was trying to get fuel economy. Uh, they say there's a five and a half to seven and a half percent increase in fuel mileage w with using AFM and DOD. But if a vehicle is actually tuned efficiently, then you can see that increase somewhere else. So that was the biggest thing on why they did it was trying to get better fuel economy. It's a horrible design. It's notorious for failing, not only on their Gen 4 engines, but their Gen 5 engines and other manufacturers have the same issue with using a displacement on demand type in engine management. If we talk about pros, you're probably looking at maybe a little bit of fuel economy. That's really about it. Um, when you get into the cons of it, when this stuff starts failing, you know, when you're cruising down the highway and it goes into four cylinders, it doesn't run right. If it even does going to four cylinders, you get random engine codes, uh, you'll get the notorious lifter tick, and then eventually if it eats a lifter and eats a cam, it's going to contaminate the oil in the motor, and chances are you're probably going to end up needing an engine. Now, if you can catch a lifter tick soon enough before it starts delaminating the camshaft and the lifters, and the rollers on the lifters, you can probably get away with just doing cam and lifters in one. You've seen it go both ways a dozen times each. Now, the best way to get rid of this stuff, there's two different ways you can go about it. There's a cheap route, there's which is called a disable plug. You buy like a plug-in handheld programmer or you go to a tuner and you have them turn it off within the ECM and that deactivates it. That makes it not come on anymore. But the parts are still in the engine. The parts can still fail, whether they're being activated, deactivated. If they're in there, they can fail, especially when you have springs moving, stuff like that, um, oiling issues and such. The proper way to do it is going into a full AFM DOD delete. That involves changing the camshaft, the lifters, and several other parts. And when we do them, we replace a whole bunch of stuff. Be on the lookout for a video on that coming next week. Uh, we're gonna break down everything we put in a, a AFM DOD cam swap. From there, it really just depends on the level of the build that we're doing and how far the customer's trying to take it. Sometimes we leave the VVT in, tuning benefits, but on a typical daily driver, that's just gonna be dialed in on a tune, not really seeing any wide open th throttle stuff or high performance application, uh, we will delete the VVT. You can delete the VVT or you can leave the VVT in it. VVT is variable valve timing. Essentially what that is, is your cam phaser on the front of the cam is a loud 
so much advance and retard through an electronic solenoid that's located at the front of the cam, pushing a button on the front of the cam bolt, allowing oil into the phaser. We can get various size limiters and lockouts for those. Or on the Gen 4 LS, you, that's for Gen 5. On the Gen 4, you can delete it or put a limiter in it. But on the Gen 5 stuff, they do not have a full delete to delete VVT for Gen 5. So we have to use a limiter or a lockout and retain the factory phaser. We might do another video and go into little in depth a little more on variable valve timing and the benefits of it. And how you can and how you can use tuning and use VVT to your advantage in a wide open throttle application. But like I said, I do not have a AFM DOD V loam here that has the veins and stuff all over it. But we do have a used LS3 style non AFM cover. And like I said, it's flat. The AFM ones have a bunch of veins in here. It looks kind of crazy. The casting looks crazy. And then when you flip this one over, you've noticed these block offs that have seals on them. Now you can either use this or a pill style DOD plug from CBI Streetcars. Um, being as this is a 6.2 that we're working on right now, this is what I have at hand, and this is the plate that came off of it. We'll put new seals and a new gasket on it and run this cover right here uh, as the block off. Now your the AFM V-Loam is gonna have a bunch of solenoids under here, and that's what's actuated and allows oil to drop in through through a channel here in this cover and it would come out and go into the block through an AFM tower. Next time we have one come through we'll do a video on it and talk about it a little more and a little more in depth. But that's the basic gist of AFM and DOD, what it does, how it works, why it was created, why they implemented it, some of the pros and cons of it, how to get rid of it. You can definitely count on seeing more videos of us talking about this and showing you guys a little more hands on with it. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you have any questions drop us a comment, send us an email. You can go to our website to the contact us page and email us through there. And make sure you smash that subscribe button and let us know in the comments if you're liking the content that we're dropping. We hope this video helps and until next time, if you're not following us, grab that button.